I know, I know. I said I'd do the wingtip next, but it makes more sense to do the lead, leading edge prior to the wingtip, so I'm going to start here. Again, another mod that I did was the leading edge. Now, most people will run a continuous stick from uh, one end of the wing to the other end to make up the leading edge, epoxy it to each rib, and then shape it to the rounded nose. Now, I am a big advocate of saving weight, and I figured that you're going to run this length of wood across the front of the whole wing, and then you're going to put plywood around it anyway. I figured, what's the point of having that that uh, that leading edge stick? So I decided not to use one. Instead, what I did was make these individual uh, nose caps for the ribs. The way that I did this was I took a rib and um, I laid it on, on the table and I took a, a piece of construction paper and laid it on the top and bottom cab strips and moved it around until it gave me a nice rounded nose. Then I traced that curve onto a sheet of paper and then transferred that onto my wood and cut the individual pieces. Now these pieces are obviously the same width as the cap strips and they just get glued directly to the nose of the ribs. Now my wing is a riblet 612 design and you have a lot of frontal area on the very front of the individual ribs so you got a lot of good epoxy uh, surface to hold these noses into place. And that's all I did. I, I cut a nose for each rib and then I um, epoxied them onto the fronts of the ribs and I held them in place with the with some wax cord. Just just enough uh, tension on the cord to hold it in place and prevent it from sliding but not so tight that it would squeeze out the uh, the epoxy. And then once I got all these in place and they were dry I started forming up the actual plywood for the leading edge. All right, so here's a rib, and I'm going to explain a little bit how I came up with the shape for that nose area. So I'm going to hand this camera off to my assistant. Okay, so you have your, your rib laid out on the bench, and you have a piece of paper underneath it. And then you take another sheet of paper, and you just lay it on the top and bottom cap strips, something like this. And then you can see as you move this around, you can change the shape of the nose, either by sliding the top or the bottom of the paper. So what I did was I just fooled around with this a little bit until I got a nice uniform shape on the nose. And then with the help of another person, I would just hold this in place and they would come around, if I can do this one-handed here, you would just trace this shape onto the paper below here. I know this is actually if you use uh, some stiffer cardboard than a, a sheet of paper like this it'd probably be better but once you get your shape figured out you hold it in place and then you can trace or have someone trace around it onto this sheet of paper and then you just cut that shape out put it on your wood and uh, start cutting them. Here's a little tidbit I hope some of you may find useful. What I've noticed when doing my leading edge plywood, this, uh, this butt end here where the plywood sits on top of the rib and you bring, obviously you bring your other piece of plywood in here and they butt together right here. You get epoxy gets squeezed out of here a little bit onto the rib and I try to get in here really, really good with, with a rag and, and clean that epoxy out, that squished out epoxy out of here really well. But as hard as I try, I can't get a real clean, crisp, hard corner here anymore sometimes once the epoxy is in place and we all know how it tends to flow and, and creep into places. So what I've done is on these joints, 
on the next piece of plywood that comes in here, underneath of it, I'll with sandpaper, I'll, I'll put a little bit of a chamfer, if you will, on the bottom of that incoming piece of leading edge plywood. That way when the plywood comes into here and it lays up on the rib, that underside is, is chamfered a little bit and it will clear any of this epoxy that may be balled up or seep out onto this rib. That way the plywood will, will lay on the rib here flush and it won't stick up higher than this existing piece of plywood. I'll go over to a piece that I'm getting ready to put on here now and show you exactly what I'm talking about. But that approach seems to work pretty well, at least it has for me so far. Alright, so continue a little bit with that, uh, that, that plywood chamfer. Here's my next piece of plywood that's going to make up the last piece of leading edge for my right wing. And let's just pretend for a moment that this edge here is going to be the edge that butts up against the existing plywood. Um, I'll come in here just as an example with my sanding block and I'll put, I'll, I'll sand that chamfer in, into the plywood. And so if you were to look at this up close once it's sanded, this corner here will be broken at an angle. And it's this angle then that would lay on the rib like that and then up underneath here is where that angle will be cut and if there's any existing epoxy that squeezes out from that from the other uh, piece of plywood that chamfer will relieve that area a little bit so this will fit this will lay nice and flat on the rib and you won't have it sticking up because it's got epoxy underneath it. So I hope that's explained somewhat clearly it seems to work well for me and uh, I haven't had any problems with one sheet of plywood being higher than any of the other sheets once installed. So keep it in mind, give it a shot, and hopefully that will help alleviate some minor issues that you may run into. Here's the, the, the system, if you will, that I came up with for figuring out how to uh, cut and form these sheets of uh, leading edge. Um, here, obviously, this one, as you saw in the, uh, the little video clip prior to this, this, this is um, a piece of leading edge actually clamped into place and drying. I can probably take these clamps off any time, but I, I hate to take them off early and have something pop loose, so bear with all the clutter with, with these, these pictures of clamps and, and these different little support boards and stuff, but anyway, um, what I wanted to talk about is the way that I did it was pretty straightforward, pretty simple, I think. What I did was, if I come over here to this rib, this is a little bit cleaner. I basically used this as a reference point, this, this edge here underneath, and I measured from, from here all the way around and up to wherever I wanted to have the plywood stop. Um, I chose to have it stop roughly in this area where the pencil mark is, which works out to be 10 inches. So it's, it's, it's a 10 inch wrap around from, from this designated reference point, wrapped around up to this point here. That, that ends up for me 10 inches. And you can see it there. That's the whole 10 inches there. So then what I do is I obviously cut the um, the plywood 10 inches uh, wide on the table saw and then the other thing that I had done is again coming back to this reference point here or, or any reference point I guess you could use that top line if you wanted to but what I did was I laid my tape measure on this reference point here which is where the gusset intersects the rib and I measured around to roughly the center of the radius here. For me, that measurement ended up being, I think it was three and a half inches from here around to the, to the uh, center line of this nose radius here. So I took that three and a half inches, let me see if I can get a picture. Oh yeah, I don't know if this will focus or not, but I took that three and a half inches and I drew 
a line down the the length of the leading edge plywood. So from from that back reference point around to the roughly the center line of the rib nose, that three and a half inches that I had measured, I translate that measurement onto the plywood and I run it run a line down the length of the plywood. Of course this is all done after it's cut on the table saw. It's the right size, uh, 10 inches, and obviously it's still flat. Now this center line, when I go to, I drape this plywood over my bending jig, this center line lays on top of, of the bar. It's, it's actually not a bending jig. I actually use just a, a solid bar from some of my free weights. But this this drawn line here gets centered over top of the bar and then the plywood just gets bent around that. This line provides me a reference so that from, from, from one end down to the other end it doesn't twist or it doesn't walk. It doesn't end up curving one way or another. It stays, I keep it nice and straight and since this is the high point if you will on the bar and this gets wrapped down around the bar from there. This is my high point, which ends up being the high point on the nose of the rib, which is what you want. When you do it that way and you come back after it's dry and you lay this up on here, this radius will be close enough so that the line will meet with the, the uh, center of, of your nose and that should lay you right on or real close to your references here as well as up on top. So that's how I did it. If I can, I'll, I'll get some pictures and, and maybe explain it from a different angle, but that's how I chose to do my leading edge plywood. This is one of my leading edge pieces over the steel pipe to uh, start to bend the general shape so that it will epoxy easier uh, to the ribs. And this is fresh out of my fancy dancy uh, soaking apparatus, also known as a bathtub. So what I did was, uh, this, this is just a, a steel bar from uh, one of my, my dad's old school uh, free weights. And these pieces of wood here these are actually, if, if you guys have bought any of your plywood from Aircraft uh, Spruce, these are the, the boards that they ship with their plywood to help hold shape. So I keep them and I use them for various things. So here's the plywood just bent over the pipe. And I got these larger C-clamps. They're kind of a, a, a long throated C-clamp. And um, I just form the plywood over the pipe and I hold it in place with these clamps and I wedge the these boards in between and it just so works out with this one inch bar and these these C clamps here I'm not sure what the throat depth is but with the one inch bar these particular clamps and these particular boards on either side this is actually behind the clamp here can see here in this area here. It actually works out almost perfect for the bend. If I come back here you'll see what I'm talking about a little bit better. Have the one inch bar, the C-clamp, piece of wood here, piece of wood here, and that ends up forming a really nice curve on the plywood for my particular uh, nose profile on the rib. These two center clamps, sometimes what will happen is these boards here will tend to bow out a little bit in the middle and I just put these C clamps to to hold a, a compression here a little bit so that the plywood stays along the length of the plywood it, it stays nice and, and flat and true. You don't get any kind of waves or bows. And uh, so that's why these clamps are in the middle. This is a relatively short piece of leading edge. This is probably two and a half feet or so. The majority of the ones that I've been doing have been closer to four foot so 
the clamps in the center play a bigger role in the longer pieces to keep to keep this from bowing out. But uh, with this short piece, it's not too critical. But uh, I offset the clamps as you see here with the with the threaded end hanging out on both sides, opposite of each other, just for balance. Because what will happen is if you put them both on the same side, th this whole thing will try to roll, which you don't want. And the, the big thing here is my reference line that I had talked about earlier. Let's see if I can get this. Here's my reference line. Don't know how clear that is. But that's the reference line that I had talked about earlier that runs down the length of the, the um, leading edge. And as I had said before, from, from the back side here of the plywood up and around, for me, it ended up being three and a half inches. And now that line I run on the top center of the pipe. So this is the highest point. This represents the very front of the nose of the rib. And, uh, I, and it makes for a good alignment too because if you, you run your line here on the center of the pipe and you run it on across and your line on the opposite side. Let me get some light on there. Come on now. Your line here is also on the center of the pipe, assuming your pipe is straight. Then that should give you a nice uniform length of leading edge plywood. Nicely bent, straight, and it's straight. Uh, you won't have this leg here, if you will, three and a half inches. And by the time you get down here, you've got two inches. With this reference line down the middle, it kind of maintains the, the correct alignment all the way across. So, there's some tidbits there. That's how I decided to do mine. And so far, it's been working out very, very well. I am very, very pleased. Here is a picture of my state-of-the-art Pete and Paul air camper wing leading edge plywood soaker otherwise known as a bathtub. What you see is the plywood actually in the tub with water and uh, the little green discs are uh, free weights that I use to uh, to hold it submerged. You probably noticed the, the nice little uh, rings that these weights left on a couple of the pictures of my leading edge. But um, that's how it goes and this is how I chose to soak my plywood. I would soak it in the tub hot water eh, probably for about an hour and that seemed to work. Hey everybody, just wanted to say real quick again, thanks for checking out my YouTube videos and uh, just a couple of real quick tidbits before you leave. If you'd be so kind as to check out my GoFundMe page, the link is down in the description of these videos. 
for those of you who uh, find it in your heart to uh, donate for this new cause of mine. I've got another project going on and uh, there's some really cool things I'd like to do with this aircraft um, and again that's all explained in my GoFundMe but um, if you find move en moved enough to go do that and donate um, I've got this, this horizontal stabilizer skin and uh, donors will get their name put on this skin and ultimately when this gets filled and uh, the aircraft gets finished this is going to be hung up on the wall of honor in my hangar just a little uh, a little bit of recognition for those donors who helped make the project a reality. Another thing too is I'm sure you've noticed that even this video that I'm making right now is of the same or worse quality than the video that you just watched and that's because believe it or not this camera is the exact same camera that I filmed the original hint videos with. So uh, I just wanted to point that out. I'm not really sure why but uh, I know the video quality lacks but hopefully the information within is uh, is worth something. And the other thing that I want to mention real quick is again these are little snippets from my Hint video DVDs so a lot of these individual clips just kind of come to an abrupt end. Um, that's just the way it is when I'm, I'm trying to rip these DVDs apart and, and re-edit them into small little segments and they, they just kind of end weird at, at times. But that's it. That's all I wanted to say. And again, thanks. And I hope you'll come back, check out my channel, and uh, see if there are any new videos and updates. All right. I'll talk to you then. See you.